Okay, now I'm about to cut out my material. This is the pattern we just had made. This is the fabric I'm using, which happens to be the same, same fabric. Um, and you notice that I've got a, another line right here. This is called my tacking strip, which I'll explain later on. Um, and that is going to be attached to the top of it after we've got it all finished off. But don't get too concerned about that. I just want to show you that I'm also cutting that at the same time. Uh, you want to allow yourself an extra inch or two over your pattern. Uh, this pattern came out just about 35 inches. Um, so I'm cutting my fabric about 37 inches. And this is a three and a half inch piece for my tacking strip. So I'm just cutting both of them at the same time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to fold my fabric in half. I'm also going to need a little piece of this also for the sides of the back swag, um, but I'll cut that out a little later. Okay, so this I'm just going to put to the side. Remove my pattern. I'm going to fold this in half. Put my pattern back on. Now at this point, if you notice that your width of your swag pattern is, is either too wide or too small, you can adjust it. You can bring this back off of your fabric a little bit to make it a little narrower. And don't forget, if you're going like a half inch off, you're actually deducting an inch off of your uh, swag width. And if you're going this way, you're actually adding. Um, if just by taking a half inch here, you're adding another inch. So the point I'm making is if you have multiple uh, window sizes, you can adjust the pattern now to meet those using the same pattern. You can, you can make it wider by bringing this pattern over farther, or you can make the width narrower. Nothing you can do about the length. You can't, you can't adjust the length of it uh, without making a new pattern. But you can adjust the width of it. But for now, because this came out just right, I'm keeping it even. And always, always, always fold your fabric in half, at least for your first cut, um, using a pattern because that's going to be the most accurate. Now we're going to pin it. We're just going to stick some pins in to hold it in place while we cut it. I'm also, for myself, I'm going to adjust the bottom a little bit as I'm cutting it to make it look a little rounder. Um, sometimes when you make a pattern, it doesn't quite look quite straight. This is the case right here. So this is the time to adjust it. And all I'm going to do is just make it a little bit rounder right here. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I can eyeball it. You may not be able to. You might want to um, take a um, pencil or something. Uh, for myself, I feel pretty comfortable with what I just did.
Okay. Fabric is cut. The next step is we're going to add our lining. Now the lining is important to do this a little differently. Um, so make sure you watch this. I'm take this off here for a second. Sorry, left you for a minute. This is my lining. I'm using Rockline Rain No Stain Lining. It's 100% cotton lining. I recommend 100% cotton. Now another important point I neglected to tell you. A lot of times you have to seam the swag because your material is not going to be wide enough to make it. When you seam it, you want to use a full piece in the center and then enough to seam the balance of it. Never put a seam of fabric directly in the center. You want to use a whole width of material and then take another width, cut it in half, and put it on each end so you have a seam on both sides of it. And, and then you can go ahead and cut it out. So I just want to let you know that's what you want to do. In this case with the lining, um, I am not going to seam my lining. If it doesn't fit this way, which it doesn't, then I'm going to flip it this way so I don't have to seam my lining either. Not that it's a bad thing to seam it, I just said I don't have to. This video is actually for you. I'm, this is just a sample that I'm making just for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the bottom. And you notice this is the face of the fabric here. So what I'm doing, and this is the face of the lining, like the shiny side of the lining. So it's face to face, pointing downward. And you also notice that I've left a little bit of the lining at the top, especially where it's got the writing, but that's uh, neither here nor there. I just want to leave a little extra up at the top right now also. And yes, I stick my pins in a little different than you probably do. I'm sticking them in vertically. Um, you can stick them in either way you like. Um, some people point out, oh, well, my, my, my sewing machine will hit the pin. It won't. The needle will either jump over it or it'll deflect the pin out. Um, there's some good advantages to sticking your pin in this way. You don't have to. But what it does um, when you stick a pin in this way like you're probably used to doing. You see how it created that little ripple? Maybe you can or you can't. That's what happens when you stick them in. So if you have multiples in there, you're already starting to put little ripples in your lining. So you can eliminate that by not putting your pit in that way. I know, it's, people are always used to it, but professionally speaking, this is how we use our, we put our pins in. You don't have to, it's just how we do it. Now when I cut away the lining, I am not cutting out all these pleats, and you do not want to. You want to make sure you're leaving, it doesn't matter how much, but you want to make sure you're leaving um, Enough side, enough on each side of this. Because you're first going to cut the bottom out, you're going to sew along the bottom, you're going to turn it, you're going to press it, and then after that, you're going to cut out the rest of the lining. If you do this now, by the time you sew it and you press it, that will not line up with your pleating. So make sure. You do not trim the sides of it.
Okay, there you have it. The face fabric cut. We got our lining. We got it pinned to the bottom. We're not putting any more pins on it. Going over to the sewing machine. See you in a second. Okay, we're at the sewing machine now. And as you notice, the swag is on top. The lining's on the bottom. We're now going to stitch down the uh, very bottom of the swag to the lining. Um, I changed the color of my thread so it is nice and dark. Hopefully the bobbin doesn't run out. I didn't check the bobbin and if you do a lot of sewing you always notice that the bobbin runs out at the most inopportune time. It's usually when you just have to make one or two stitches here or there. <laughs> when you're in a rush, you notice the bobbin runs out. After this, we go over to the pressing board. We're going to press, turn it, we're going to press it. And all that good stuff. back tack. It's great we didn't run out of thread. like that idea. Okay, so we're over here at the pressing board. Now what we're going to do, we're going to remove these pins. And because this is half round, it has a little half roundness to it, we're going to put a little, little uh, slits in the fabric. Sorry, little slits in the fabric like this. Not all the way up to the uh, half inch sewing allowance, but just little cuts in it. What this is going to do is allow for the uh, where the hem is, just to relax a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to open this up like so. We're going to flip it. I'm actually going to press this on the lining side, but I want to make sure I have it all even here. Now, flip it over. Now, I don't want the lining to be right to the edge. I want just like an eighth of an inch of the self fabric on the back side of it. And that will help so you don't see the lining at all. If you put the lining right to the edge, I never like to do that. On almost any type of balance I'm making, I like to have at least a little bit of the reveal of the self fabric on the back where the lining is. That's why I like to press to the lining side first. Make sure you get it in place. You're taking your fingernails and getting the lining out. Take your time with this. Once you have it where you want it, Make sure your iron's hot so you're not spilling water on your fabric. It's okay to give the, the body a little press while you're doing it.
Done with that. Now we're going to go back over to the other table. We're going to pin where all the pleats are. We're going to pleat the swag. Be right back.